The following module will give you an overview of seizures. Throughout this module, we will explore the definitions of seizure disorders and epilepsy, the different types of seizures and events that trigger them. We will also address proper first aid interventions for seizures, as well as consider how seizures impact a student's development and function. Seizures occur when the electrical system of the brain malfunctions. Instead of discharging electrical energy in a controlled manner, the brain cells keep firing. This malfunction can cause someone to collapse, convulse, or have another temporary disturbance of normal brain function. Not all seizures result in loss of consciousness. Some seizures may result in a change to a person's sense of sensation, awareness, or behavior. True seizures are involuntary in nature. This sudden uncontrolled onset of excessive electrical discharges in the brain results in a temporary communication problem between nerve cells. Let's take a look at the different conditions that can cause seizures. Epilepsy is a neurological condition that affects the nervous system and makes an individual susceptible to seizures. While an epileptic condition may make a person more prone to seizures, not all seizures are caused by epilepsy. Seizures have many different causes, such as high fever, exposure to drugs or alcohol, low blood sugar levels, infection, imbalances of body fluids, a sudden loss of blood supply to the brain, a traumatic brain injury, or even brain tumors. Seizures can be triggered by a variety of both internal and external stressors. While most triggers can be averted, preventing the onset of a seizure, some seizure triggers cannot be avoided. Every individual has different triggers. Prevention measures must be taken seriously. Seizures may or may not be preceded by an aura or a warning sign. Just as triggers vary from person to person, the occurrence of an aura varies as well. When auras occur, they usually begin seconds to minutes before the seizures and may include physical sensations like tingling, dizziness, headache, fear or panic, upset stomach, distorted vision, racing thoughts, strange feelings, distorted emotions, weird smells or taste, lightheadedness or numbness. Not all individuals with seizures will have auras. In fact, most seizures occur without any warning and can be very frightening for both the affected individual as well as those observing the seizure. Before we can determine what first aid should or should not be given for a seizure, we need to understand the different types of seizures. While some seizures are life-threatening, many are not. Seizures fall into two broad categories, generalized seizures and partial seizures. Generalized seizures affect the entire brain, while partial seizures only affect a specific area of the brain. Generalized seizures include absence, myoclonic, atonic or drop seizures, and tonic-clonic seizures, which are also known as grand mal seizures. Let's first take a look at generalized seizures. This student is experiencing an absence seizure. Absence, or petty mal seizures, typically last less than 30 seconds. They are often manifest by brief episodes of staring or spaciness. They frequently are mistaken for daydreaming, boredom, or inattentiveness. Absence seizures may also involve blinking, chewing, or various hand movements. During an absence seizure, awareness and responsiveness are impaired, and the individual is unaware that they are having a seizure. Absence seizures may occur occasionally or may reoccur multiple times during a day. No first aid is required for absence seizures. However, a gentle reminder of the task at hand or repeating of instructions or questions are generally necessary. This person is experiencing a myoclonic seizure. Myoclonic seizures are also generalized seizures that involve rapid, brief muscle jerks. Myoclonic movements usually occur at the same time on both sides of the body, but have been known to involve only one side. Myoclonic jerking may appear as clumsiness, resulting in loss of balance. 
As with absence seizures, myoclonic seizures are not life-threatening and no first aid is required. Instructions or questions may need to be repeated and a gentle reminder for the student of the task at hand is appropriate. This girl is experiencing an atonic seizure. Atonic seizures are also known as drop attacks because they result in an abrupt loss of muscle tone that cause the head to drop and the individual to suddenly collapse. This boy is also experiencing atonic seizures. Because of the sudden onset of these seizures without warning, they can result in significant injuries to the head and face. Therefore, it's advisable that the individual wear some form of protective headgear. While atonic seizures in and of themselves are not life-threatening, the resulting head injury may require first aid interventions. The most well-known of all the generalized seizures are tonic-clonic seizures, also called grand mal seizures. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures usually last less than 5 minutes but can continue for up to 30 to 45 minutes. They are identified by a loss of consciousness, stiffening of the arms and legs, the tonic phase, followed by a jerking movement, the clonic phase. There may also be a loss of bladder or bowel control. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures can be life-threatening due to impaired breathing during the seizure that can lead to decreased oxygen to the brain. The longer the seizure continues, the more danger of injury to the brain. Because of impaired breathing patterns during these seizures, ashen or blue skin discoloring often occurs. First aid intervention is imperative with tonic-clonic seizures. First aid for tonic-clonic seizures includes easing the person to the floor and positioning them on their side. Keep hard, sharp, or hot objects out of the way. Do not attempt to try and stop the seizure by restraining the individual. Do not force anything into their mouth or give them food or fluids. Loosen any restrictive clothing that may impair their breathing. Observe and note the length of the seizure, any skin discoloration, any injury caused by the seizure, and any difficulty breathing. And finally, if the individual has stopped breathing, or if the generalized tonic-clonic seizure lasts longer than 5 minutes, call 911 or EMS services. Following a tonic-clonic seizure, the person will probably be sleepy and should be allowed to rest in a quiet and comfortable place. Since consciousness is lost during the seizure, the person should be reoriented to what occurred, what time it is, and where they are. No person having a seizure should be left alone until they are fully conscious and alert. The student's parent or guardian should be notified of the seizure activity. If an adult suffers a seizure, notify a family member. Any serious injury or prolonged seizure should be reported to the school's administration. Partial seizures are the most common type of seizures experienced by people with epilepsy. Unlike generalized seizures, partial seizures only affect one area of the brain but may spread to other areas of the brain causing a generalized type of seizure. The manifestations of the seizure are determined by the specific area of the brain affected. There are two types of partial seizures, simple and complex. The only difference is that awareness, memory, and consciousness are maintained during a simple partial seizure, whereas they are impaired or lost with complex partial seizures. This child is experiencing a simple partial seizure. These seizures are brief, usually only lasting less than a couple of minutes. Manifestations are individualized depending on the area of the brain experiencing the abnormal electrical activity. Simple partial seizures usually only affect one side of the body but may migrate to the other. Individuals with these seizures often experience altered sensations of vision, sound, taste, smell, or feeling. They may experience nausea, sweating, or other bodily discomforts and function. They also usually have emotional changes or difficulty with language processing during the seizure. This student is having a complex partial seizure. Individuals having this type of seizure are not aware nor have any memory of events during the seizure, but tend to remain conscious. 
These seizures are recognized by a variety of abnormal or bizarre behaviors such as repeated motions, picking at clothes, daydreaming, wringing of hands or rubbing arms or legs, vocalizations, wandering or running, chewing or mumbling. Complex partial seizures generally last only a few minutes. After the seizure, these individuals tend to be confused or frightened and require calm reassurance. During a complex partial seizure, speak calmly and reassuringly. Guide the individual gently away from any hazards to keep them safe. Always stay with them until they regain full awareness of their surroundings and the seizure behaviors have stopped. Do not try to restrain them and don't shout at them or expect them to be able to follow any instructions during the seizure. As previously discussed, most seizures are not life-threatening and do not require EMS involvement. However, 911 must be called in the following situations. Any seizure lasting longer than five minutes. If the person has no previous history of seizures. If a seizure is followed by another seizure, this is known as clustering. If the individual is having difficulty breathing or has stopped breathing. If a serious injury occurred as a result of the seizure, such as a head injury. Or if the person having the seizure is a known diabetic. As in any emergency situation, remain with the individual until emergency assistance arrives. Always notify parents or family members. Most seizures can be controlled with medication. However, in some individuals, medications alone are inadequate to prevent frequent uncontrolled seizures. In these cases, a vagal nerve stimulator, or VNS, may be implanted under the skin in the chest area to help control the seizures. A VNS is programmed to deliver short bursts of electrical energy to a specific nerve via a tiny wire. These bursts of energy interfere with the brain's electrical activity and stop the seizure. Additionally, vagal nerve stimulators can deliver extra cycles of electrical stimulation when a medical magnet is passed or swiped over the implanted VNS. These magnets come in different strengths and styles and may be worn on the person's wrist. When the vagal nerve stimulator is activated by swiping the magnet, the person may experience a brief change in voice quality, tingling in the throat, the urge to cough, or a feeling of being out of breath. As with most medical devices, certain precautions should be taken with the magnet and VNS. To use a VNS magnet, simply swipe the magnet over the VNS in a circular motion or in a W pattern. Do not hold the magnet motionless over the VNS for more than one to two seconds as this will deactivate the VNS altogether. It should be noted that the magnets create a very strong magnetic field and should not be placed near computers, portable computer tablets, cell phones, or credit cards. Individuals with pacemakers should not administer magnet swipes as the magnet may alter the function of the pacemaker too. Avoid all direct blows to the chest of the individual with an implanted VNS as this may damage the device. If a blow to the chest does occur, notify parents of the event. Challenges of seizures are not only limited to physical difficulties. Most individuals with seizures are at an increased risk for emotional and behavioral issues as well. Staff awareness of these challenges can help guide school personnel in offering any additional assistance the individual may need. All school faculty and administrative personnel should be sensitive to the emotional stressors experienced by those with seizures. Persons with seizures are often teased and bullied because of their seizures. Often, a simple short discussion with the class regarding the student and their seizures is all that's required to increase sensitivity and respect from classmates. Of course, before any classroom presentation, this should be discussed with the student and their parent as to the best way to address this. School staff should be aware that some restrictions may be placed on recreational activities because of the student's seizures. Extra effort should be given to avoid a sense of isolation. 
It should be noted that people with epilepsy are not usually intellectually challenged. However, there is a greater risk for learning problems and underachievement in students with seizures. Students with seizures may have problems with focusing, concentration, memory, and organizational skills. They may also experience fatigue from having seizures, and the side effects of their medications can contribute to learning difficulties. Most students with a seizure disorder will have an individualized health care plan developed by the district nurse in place to assist staff in recognizing seizures and how best to intervene. Notify your district nurse if you know of a student with seizures so they may provide assistance to you in meeting the individual medical needs of that student.